How would you describe your move from Carlson Gracie to the Brazilian top team? Yeah, it was, as people know already, it was because of uh, a contract that Castle made. Castle was leaving U.S. and uh, for some reason he thought the students would leave him. It wasn't real. So people didn't, didn't want to believe him at all. And instead, you were organizing the team. And he made it, he, he make the summary of the situation. He made a contract saying that the students, the fighters, must pay everything about everything. Sponsorship, 20% about purses, you know, fight purses. Everything, any, any money you know, you make, you have to pay him 20%. But in the country, didn't say how many days he should train us. So they only said that he, we could use his gym to train. So we were in Brazil training by myself. Uh, my, my, my last two fights, I had to go to US to train with him on my own expenses. So I pay to go there to train for one month when I fought Tom Erickson. And then when I fought Bolander, I went there and training for two weeks on my own expenses. So um, we thought, we would, you know, I, I used to pay 20% to him, always never complain, but we thought it wasn't right. It didn't show that, uh, you know, Carson had to train us. So he got to receive money with no work as a coach, just appearing the day of the fight. That's the only obligation. And everybody thought it wasn't right. I told him that, you know, and I have a conversation. I was the old, I think it was the, the oldest one fighting. And I, I have a good relationship with him, explaining him that. I said, people disagree with that. If you want to make a contract, let's go to attorney and make a contract fair for both parts. He disagreed with that. He said, must be this contract, in, you know, and, and, and yeah, we disagreed with that, which we thought was unfair. It was unfair. Uh, and then in this this time, the discussion, they were talking about this. A peer fight, they, 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 they invite me to fight in UFC in Japan. And then look for him. And I told Jim Carson, look, uh, let's go to Japan with me, you know. Uh, no worries about training and everything. Just go to Japan. I pay 20% and then we'll return. We, we, we find this, you know, we, we solve this problem with the contract. We got together for so long. It, can, it cannot, can, cannot be an issue between our relationship. And I said, no, I won't go. And I said, man, I have to go. I would like you to go with me. I said, I don't want to go. And then I went, uh, you know, by myself with my, 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 my friends, and I won. And after the fight, the Japanese told me that uh, Carson released a note that I was excluded from the team. And when I returned to Brazil, I looked for him, went to his academy, I had a, an hour, one hour private conversation, I explained to him the mistake he was doing. You know, I was doing my best for him for the last you know, all of the time I was there, I was together with him for the last 25 years. And, you know, I was elected for the Soscarson Race Association by Unanimous for, for the whole uh, students' crew of Carson. You know, they vote for me to be a president of the Carson Race Club in 19, 19, 1998. We found a custom race club to organize the team, you know, organize the, 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 the academies. So it was uh, the first association. I think it was the first one association among all others. And I thought at the beginning that was, a, a, you know, a, a, a misunderstanding that, you know, would pass and custom with, 
step back, you know, and, and, and realize that it was being so hard with the contract issue. And you could do something uh, like you want something professional, you want to do business, so you have to negotiate, right? So, but uh, I call him sometimes after that. He said he keep this. He was keeping his his, his decision, and I really thought at the time it was past. You know, I got him back, return to the reality, and understand the mistake he was doing. And then one day I met him in the social meeting, like. Uh, and I would shake his hand. He refused to shake my hand. And then from this day I had a kind of stopped asking him anything. I stopped calling him, you know, and then I I follow my way. And some and then after that we put off the team, some of my friends. And then we went to train in my academy and keep training more people coming, you know, Minotauro coming, Minotoro coming and you know, guys coming to train with me and my partners. I would, I would, I wouldn't refuse. You know, I would say no. You know, so if Castle want to look at me and you know, still have a door open, it wasn't the end. But Castle was talking a lot of bad things about me and my friends, and and keep you know, bombing us like you know, so talking a lot of things that coming from my old friends or somebody that had a relationship, it hurts. But even that was the, the, the you know, the, the, I mean, was the finish. The finish went, it was when, uh, when I was about to fight uh, Chuck Liddell. And then I knew that Castle went there to offer him to train against me. And then this was the, you know, the, the, the deadline was the end for me, but after that, didn't have any condition to have a, you know, a, a, a deal. So it's after that, I kind of it is what it is. Forgot, yeah. yeah, it is what it is. I forgot completely and moved myself. You know, so. To hear the entire interview, please subscribe to the Lights Out MMA History Podcast, available on all major podcast platforms.